Hi guys, it's Jean-Claude, and then there were two. All right, let's take, oh, tricked you, let's go for this one. All right, and if you didn't see the last video, I just wanna point out that I opened my first Twitter account. It's Jean C underscore Keyforge. If you wanna see how I'm doing in the tournament this weekend, go ahead and follow me, and I will post my results. Today's deck is Sanctum, Untamed and Brobnarts, Chancellor, Domino, Anson. Let's see what this deck has in store for us. This box overall has been really good. I love everything this box has. I mean, every deck has just been on fire so far. Let's have a nice strong finish, shall we? It's Untamed, Way of the Bear. Amber to be play it? It's an upgrade. This creature gains Assault 2. Very nice for taking care of some of those smaller creatures that have Elusive, because you can do the Assault prior to the fight, so it actually kills the creature. Niffleape, 3 power. When Niffleape is attacking, ignore Taunt and Elusive. Once again, another way to take care of Elusive, guys. Hey, two Niffleapes. Cool. Three Niffleapes. Oh, man, hold on. I still have yet to open a Niffle Queen deck. Could today be the day? Mermook, 3 power. Your opponent's keys cost plus 1 Amber. Snufflegator, 4 power. Skirmish. Halicor, 4 power. Each friendly flame creature gains Skirmish. Witch of the Wilds, nice card. 4 power. During each turn in which Untamed is not your active house, you may play one Untamed card. Very cool. Ritual of the Hunt, artifact. And whenever you play it, sacrifice Ritual of the Hunt. For the remainder of the turn, you may use friendly Untamed creatures. Nice. Ooh, Nepenthe Seed. Artifact, Omni Effect, Sacrifice it, return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Lost in the Woods, and whenever you play it, choose two friendly creatures and two enemy creatures. Shuffle each chosen creature into its owner's deck. Key Charge, hmm, didn't see too many ways to use it in here, but not bad with the seed. For any turn that we're able to reap with a bunch of creatures where we might have only had three or four to start with, get ourselves up to seven, Nepenthe Seed into this, get it, make a key. So you lose an Amber, if you do, you may forge a key at current cost. And now we are on to Sanctum, and what a fun little card this is. It's Numquid the Fair. Three power, play, destroy an enemy creature, repeat this card's effect if your opponent still controls more creatures than you. Very nice. Lady Maxina, five power, two armor. Play, stun a creature. As an action, return Lady Maxina to its owner's hand. Oh, it's a horseman deck. Oh my god. What a fantastic box this is. Oh. Okay, guys. Five power. It's Horsemen of War. For the remainder of the turn, whenever you play it, each friendly creature can be used as if it was in the active house, but can only fight. Fantastic. Love these guys. Horsemen of Pestilence, five power. Play, fight, reap. Deal one damage to each non-horseman creature. And, of course, it's another horseman. It's a famine this time. Play, fight, reap. Destroy the least powerful creature. And the fourth one is Horsemen of Death. Five power. Return each horseman creature from your discard pile to hand. Wow, I can't believe we opened two of these in this box. So good. Four power, two armor. It's Bulwark. Each of Bulwark's neighbors get plus two armor. That's actually a really good card to try and protect some of our smaller guys against that uh, damage yeah, coming from Horsemen of Pestilence. So that's not bad. Whispering Reliquary. Artifact. Return an artifact to its owner's hand as an action. Do like this card, and you need artifact control if you're going to be playing a big tournament. The harder they come. Purge a creature with power five or higher. Nice. Oh my god, two of those. That is awesome, guys. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's the first time I've ever opened two in the same deck. Mighty Lance. Deal three damage to a creature and three damage to a neighbor of that creature. Wow. Direct damage in Sanctum as well. And Inspiration. Play. Ready and use a friendly creature. Oh, we didn't have... Man, too bad we didn't open up uh, Witch of the Eye. That would have been pretty good with that. Especially if we would have had two. Could have created a combo. And now we're on to Brobnar. It's Smash. He's five power. Play, stun a creature. Crump, six power. After an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Crump, its controller loses an Amber. Gang or Chieftain. Five power. You may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Oh, that's the end of our Brobnar creatures. Dang, Screech Bomb. Artifact, Omni Effect, you can sacrifice it. Your opponent loses two Amber. Hey, Gauntlet Command, though. As an action, you can ready and fight with a friendly creature. It is an artifact. Another artifact, Cannon. Action, deal two damage to a creature. War Song, for the remainder of the turn, gain one Amber each time a friendly creature fights. Thank goodness we have the Gauntlet Command, because that helps us get some more fights in during our Brobner turns. Ooh, and Smith. Amber every plate, gain two Amber if you control more creatures than your opponent. Punch, one amber whenever you play it, deal three damage to a creature. 
Loot the bodies for the remainder of the turn. Gain one amber each time an enemy creature is destroyed. Is this our... Oh, one more after this. Anger, one amber whenever you play it. Ready and fight with a friendly creature. And a second anger. Wow, that's actually really good. Considering we had... Okay. So, we didn't have too many Brobnar creatures. What was it? Three? Yes, three Brobnar creatures. Not so hot, right? But, the beautiful thing is, even though we don't have many of these, we can still, thanks to these cards use our untamed creatures or our sanctum creatures. So we got two angers. Loot the bodies is good during that. So we actually, yeah, war song's really good. Gauntlet command. So it's light on the Brobner, but we have great ways to use our other creatures in the other houses. So that's not too bad. We're gonna look back through the sanctum now. Inspiration is just a very good versatile card. Love having the direct damage there. Man, these two purge, mmm. That is so good. Taking out the bigger creatures our opponents might have is going to be very nice considering it looks like our, our biggest creature, we had six power, right? We had yeah, one six power creature in Crump, but the rest of our deck is five or less, so being able to just get those guys out of our opponent's decks is really good. Like having the artifact control, very important. Yeah, these horsemen, mm, gosh, really good, really strong. Lady Maxina, also good. This is a nice little card. Since we don't actually have a big board wipe, this is our board wipe. If our opponent gets ahead of us, we're going to drop this guy. This is what's going to take care of it, right? Key charge, eh, it could work. Lost in Woods, good, good sort of control card. Nepensi, there's a lot we can do with Nepensi, that's for sure. Uh, this is a card where we're going to be able to get back another, the harder they come, to just decimate our opponent's big creatures, right? It's a way to get back Mighty Lance. There's just a whole bunch of different things you can do here with Nepen Seed. It's probably one of the best cards in the game, uh, honestly, because you always are able to then reuse the best card you've already played. That is powerful. Ritual of the Hunt, I do like this card quite a bit because we had a decent amount of untamed creatures. To be able to use those creatures on a Brobnar turn with all those effects we had, that's really good. So yeah, Witch of the Wild, Halicor, giving our guys Skirmish, excellent. Uh, it's a shame the Niffalapes aren't a little bit better, but this deck will play pretty good against all those Shadows creatures with Elusive. Even if they find a way to have a Taunt creature there next to it, we're able to still get through with these Niffalapes. So, not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad at all. Yeah, uh, this deck, oh man, I mean, it's got some good elements to it. It's got the Horsemen, which bumps it up a little, because uh, they do play very well with each other. Um, the Brobnar, I would have liked to see a few more Brobnar creatures for sure. But still an okay Brobnar. I mean, would have been really good just with maybe replace basically any two cards with two more beefy dudes, and I would have been all over that. Uh, it is going to rate fairly average. It doesn't have enough amazing things to really pull it ahead. I mean, it has some cute little tricks. Like, the harder they come, that is awesome. I love having two of those, the potential for three with the Nepenthe Seed. Um, we're just going to give this deck... Probably around a C plus rating because it's just not super strong. It can set up some good plays, but it's not it's not something that is always going to try and run away with the game very consistently because there isn't that much uh, ways to get through our deck. There's no archiving. There's no card draw. It's just it's just going to be whatever you draw, you got to play, and you're stuck with that. So uh, it does bump it down a little bit. So C plus for this deck. I do want to thank you guys for watching these videos. Um, I'll tell you what, I can't believe we got two Horsemen deck in this first print run box. I mean, plus all the other decks we opened. I mean, this thing is so good. It's really good. We have one deck left in this. Oh, please, please just be, be the deck, right? I've never opened up one of those silly on-the-turn kill decks or anything, but maybe you're the one. Yeah. I'm just going to rub it for luck, guys. Rub it for luck. All right, I'll see you next time.